This is Local Decision 2023 here on North Metro TV. And joining us now in studio, Steve McChesney, who is running for city council in Circle Pines, trying to get a second term. That's Thanks nice. for joining us, Steve. And uh, uh, you must have liked the first four years because you're <laughs> running again. Uh, so what is the motivation now? Yeah, I think it's just to continue to serve the city. I, aside from the council, I've served the city since 2008 when my wife and I bought our home. 10 years on the Planning Commission. I was an election judge for 10 years. And um, these last four years, almost four years on the council have been great. And I want to continue to try to do some good things for the city if I can, so. What do you think Circle Pines is, is doing right at this point in time as a city? Yeah, I think a lot of things. I mean, it's a great, great community, great school district. Um, you know, phenomenal parks, there's parks and trails. I mean, there aren't many homes in Circle Pines where you look out your door and you don't see a park within sight. Um, it's clean, it's safe. I mean, there's just a lot of really great things going for us. We have some challenges, but, um, you know, people tend to really like it and they stay and it's kind of a hidden gem. You know, we tell people where you live at Circle Pines, unless they live close to it, they, oh, is that up north somewhere? <laughs> so I think we're just really fortunate to have this great little community right here nestled in the Twin Cities. So. Yeah, it has a name that sounds like it would be in northern Minnesota. Sure, yeah, you it, get that a lot. It is really a, a gem, but yet it's an outer ring suburb. You can get to Minneapolis or St. Paul relatively yeah. quickly. Yeah. Is, is that one of the appeals of Circle Pines? You, you get that pastoral, rural feel, yeah. but you're in the Twin Cities metro. I think so. I think that it has kind of that small town feel. There's only about 5,000 residents. Again, the parks and trails, I think, just make it feel really, you know, I don't know if rural's the right word, but um, just outdoorsy, if you will. Uh, but yeah, that easy access to the Twin Cities and, or to the, the highways so you get to work, um, you know, and any amenity you'd want, obviously, being close to Minneapolis and St. Paul, Blaine, which is growing immensely, but, uh, but just a great little community right there in the Twin Cities. What does Circle Pines need to improve on, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, there's some things that we can get get a little bit better at. Um, we're looking at some park uh, updates, refreshes over the next few years. Uh, we've been playing that planning stage for about a year. Again, great parks and trails, but there's some things that are, you know, maybe a little stale, you know, where maybe when that park was new and fresh, uh, maybe those activities aren't as common now. Um, so we need to do some updates, some buildings that are getting a little worn down. So uh, I think parks and trails is one of them. Um, Really not a lot of opportunities. We've got some, you know, older buildings in the city as far as our commercial base goes that we want to maybe try to encourage some updating there and see what the city can do to help. But uh, overall, it's, it's just a great city and, um, you know, there's some room for improvement, but overall it's it's really, really great city, I think. So so how do you make parks and trails better? And, and let's start with parks. Sure. There's always a uh, more cutting edge uh, playground equipment, things sure. like it. safety issues come into play. And then with trails, is it repaving? Is it making it uh, user friendly for joggers, walkers, people on bikes, even rollerblades? Yeah. How does that all play in? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of all of the above. So we solicited feedback from kids and seniors and, you know, members of the community, obviously elected officials had their say our park board. You know, just trying to collect ideas of what's missing, maybe what can be a little better, what do we need a little more of. We also looked regionally, right? So Circle Pines is small. You know, do we need a community center? Well, Shoreview's got one up the road, you got splash pads in Blaine, you got Dog Park in Shoreview. Maybe we don't need those things, but you know, we're known for baseball, so maybe we upgrade a little bit there. You know, pickleball's big, but um, you know, I think it's about taking the feedback from the community and figuring out maybe where those holes are or maybe those things that Again, yeah, maybe a trail needs to be repaved because it's been neglected a little bit. But, you know, I think it's just kind of about, it, it's good. We want to get it to, to better or great. So. When you're out either knocking on doors or bumping into residents at the supermarket, what are some of the issues that come up? You know, usually it's positive feedback, to be mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. You know, I like the city. Um, you know, there's always people that maybe would like snow plowing to be a little bit better in the winter. And, you know, maybe some speeding going through the streets that, uh, you know, we have a lot of kids out playing, things like that. We've got a great police department that responds well to those things. But most of the feedback is pretty positive. When we do get, you know, uh, kind of concerns, it's, it's some of those things that, you know, uh, again, the street reconstruction can be kind of a pain when you're going through it. And, uh, but, you know, some of those smaller things that, you know, are big to those residents, we want to make sure we address them. But, you know, no major concerns. I'm not really hearing much from residents on major concerns. You said population roughly uh, 5K. Yeah. Is that where you expect Circle Pines to stay at? Yeah, the city's fully developed. 
Um, it's not like some of our neighboring communities right. that have area to develop. Um, you know, there might be a few lots here or there that, you know, could still change hands and, and maybe get developed, but for the most part, we're, we're pretty much built out. You know, so it's about making sure that, um, you know, we maintain a great level of city service for the people we do have. But I do expect it to say about that 5,000 for the very near future. So. August 1 was a seminal moment for some people in Minnesota with cannabis becoming legal. And yeah. I know all the cities within the state borders have been on their own island trying to figure this out and navigate yep. their way through legalized marijuana. Yeah. Uh, are you in favor of public ban marijuana, all smoking in general? Yeah, so we actually just passed a ban on the use of cannabinoid marijuana products in public. Um, so respect people's ability to be able to do that in the privacy of their own homes, on their properties. But we did think that, again, with kids using parks and things, that uh, those intoxicants, there really wasn't a place for that in public spaces. Um, you know, as far as an outright smoking ban, it is something we've been talking about and debating as a council. We're not there. Um, but, uh, but as far as those cannabis, cannabis products, we want to try and limit those to private property. Do you ever see the city trying to monetize it similar to liquor stores? I don't think that's in the works for Circle Pines at this time. Um, so, I, no, I don't think so. Um, we did pass some uh, licensing regulations so that once those retail stores do go into place, uh, we'll be able to manage that a little bit better. But I don't see any kind of municipal uh, cannabis location in our future, no. Is, is it a wish of the council and maybe other cities around Minnesota to get more guidance from the state of Minnesota on this? Um, you know, I think we would have liked a little bit more clarity on the use of, of the product in public. We obviously address that. Um, I think there's more to come. Yeah, I think there's probably a little more clarity that we can get over the course of the next year before, because I think 2025, January 2025 is when uh, retail product is going to be legal to sell. Um, so hopefully over the next, whatever it is, 15 months, we'll, we'll get a little bit more information. But so far, we've had good communication from our state senator and state representative on this and uh, expect that to continue. Public safety, uh, everybody wants to feel safe sure. and you know, know that police or fire will respond as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like Circle Pines checks both of those boxes? Yeah, absolutely. We got uh, great partnerships with Centerville with fire, and now we've got a, a partnership with the SBM fire department who's doing our administrative and management for us. Uh, we've seen response times go down. We've seen our costs stabilize. Um, it's, a, it's a great partnership, and um, we couldn't ask for more when it comes to our fire department, police department, same thing. Uh, crime rates went down last year. We're going to hire a couple of new officers this next year. Uh, my kids, I have two elementary school kids, and we live close enough to Centennial Elementary. They walk to school. And I don't think twice about it. It's mm -hmm. a very safe community, and that's thanks to Chief Mork and the police department who are very visible in the community and do a great job. So, yeah, I think the vast majority of Circle Pines residents would say they feel safe. That's what we hear on our surveys, and, um, and that's how I feel is just kind of the typical, uh, you know, guy with a, a family, three kids that, that are out, and I want to make sure they're in a safe community. So absolutely. Uh, how would you grade Circle Pines on infrastructure? I know they... Uh recently completed the street repaving yeah. of, of every you know, block in the city, but it, it's always an ongoing thing in yeah. Minnesota, isn't it? Yeah, so now it's, <laughs> I think it's more of a maintenance thing. As far, you know, as, far as a rating, I don't know, I'd, I'd rate it's pretty high. Because not only we do the streets, we did the utilities, the water lines, sewer lines, uh, gas lines, all that uh, was redone. I think pretty much every street in the city was completed over the past, I think it's 15, 20 years when that started. Uh, so now we're more in a maintenance road, uh, maintenance mode. So I was just making sure that uh, that we get the full life out of that uh, new infrastructure that we put into place. But yeah, very, I'd rate our infrastructure as being very high. So compare your mindset now. You've you've got four years on the resume as a council person sure. uh, to what it was four years ago as you tried to enter the fray of uh, political life, so yeah. to speak. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah. so where are you? Have you changed your thought process much, or are you exactly where you were? I. I'm certainly more knowledgeable, you know, I mean, I had some understanding of the city government, having worked on the planning commission. Um, you know, there was a lot to learn, and three months after I took office, COVID, March 2020 is when COVID took over, so it was a kind of a trial by fire that first yeah. year and all the things we had to deal with, but um, I think I'm certainly more knowledgeable, I, I'm more confident in speaking up on issues than I was four years ago. Um, you know, I think what I really need to reignite is kind of that excitement, that initial excitement, I asked a ton of questions early on. 
you know, and I think with the challenges that we'll be up against, with rising costs of so many things, you know, we need to continue to challenge things like you're brand new every day. You know, I think some of that fades a little bit. And I think that's an area where I could do a little better is making sure that, you know, I kind of go into those meetings like I did that first six months is, you know, have that same energy. And, um, you know, I plan to do that this next time around for sure. So what's the process like? Everybody goes in with grandiose visions and ideas and, <laughs> and to actually get one of your thoughts to for everyone to come together and make sure. it happen. How, how does that work? You know, we're really collaborative. And again, with it being a small town, yeah. there's not a lot of big changes. Right. Um, we'll have an issue come up from time to time, but really it's collaborative. We have our council, our city staff, we have phenomenal relationships. Even when we disagree, we're respectful. So, you know, I think everything is just, it's just very collaborative. When somebody has an idea, they're not afraid to bring it up. They're not afraid of getting, you know, shouted down. There isn't anybody in that council chamber that feels like they don't have a voice because the other three or four are against them. So. Uh, I think it's really just about not being afraid to bring up an idea or say, hey, here's what I'm thinking. You know, I'd like to try this. And um, typically our council and staff are all just very respe receptive and respectful of each other. And it's, it's, a great, it's a great dynamic. Do you feel like it's a unified council that, that you work in harmony? There may be some disagreements sure, along yeah. the way, but that generally it's about what's best for Circle Pines. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're, you know, we're obviously nonpartisan. People have their own politics, and we're all kind of aware each person sits. But we approach, and I think I can speak for them all in this, we approach every issue based on what's best for Circle Pines and not, you know, maybe where your, where your politics lies. You know, is this the right thing? And um, I feel like we have a group of people that does just that. So, uh, Cutting taxes has been a trademark the last few years. Where, where are we looking at, at what might happen in the future, taxes, budget, etc.? Yeah, again, the rising cost of everything, it, it's going to require us to look really closely at everything, the cost of everything. And I think that what Circle Pines has done really well is to have kind of that predictable change in the tax rate. So you're not seeing these roller coasters where maybe there's a big cut one year and then the next year there's a big jump. You know, we kind of want it to be steady. We know our budgets are going to go up. You know, property values hopefully will continue to go up, but um, we want to make sure that we don't do anything to overburden the taxpayers. And you know, the way to do that is to continue to work together and, and kind of look at things maybe a little different than we have in the past, some of these challenges we're facing. So, um, again, it really comes down to communication, working together with the staff and the city council and, and listening to residents. But I, I think keeping things as predictable as we can, measured and not kind of having that roller coaster that I think some cities go through with their budgeting and their taxes. What do you think the primary role of somebody on the council is? I think it's to make the decisions that are best for the, the residents. I think it's to listen to people, you know, could have a good pulse of the community and to, you know, not let your personal feelings necessarily get in the way of, you know, what the right decision is. I think we have to make sure we're making the right decision for the, the city as a whole. And, you know, you do that by listening and communicating well with, with residents and your partners on the council. Have you gone in with an idea or a proposal that you thought was a slam dunk and then you heard other perspectives and said, oh, well, maybe I do now see it differently? There have been a lot of little instances where, you know, I maybe read the council pack and I thought, man, I don't know that I'm going to be aligned with this. Um, nothing major. Again, small city, we don't have a lot right, of right. big things, you know. An example is we bought, I want to say we bought a couple of uh, hybrid police vehicles. I think it was last year, year before, and they were significantly more expensive than an average police car. You know, and I was thinking, why are we spending this money? Why don't we just, you know, stick with what we've been doing? And then before I had a chance to speak up, it was explained, well, price of gas over the course of X number of years, we're gonna actually save money. These cars are idling all the time. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, you know, my decision, you know, my my feeling on the position had changed. And there are a lot of little things like that where when we listen to each other, you know, maybe you go in and you adjust a little bit, or maybe we shouldn't be spending this much on the budget in this line. But then after it's explained, you kind of understand a little more. So I think being a good listener and good yeah. communicator, it, it goes a long way. And um, yeah, there have been a few cases like that. Good to be flexible, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, tell the viewers, you know, why should they vote for you and put you back on the council again? Yeah, so, um, you know, the experience I mentioned at my service to the community over 15 plus years. Um, I think I represent the typical Circle Pines resident, you know, middle income. My wife and I have been married 18 years. We have three little kids in the school district. 
Um, I want safe streets and clean parks. I think that I'm a good representative of what the average Circle Pines resident is looking for in their community. And um, I feel like I have been and will continue to be a good voice for them. All right, well, thanks for sharing your vision and, and for stopping by. Thank you for having me. All right, very good. Appreciate it. Uh, he's Steve McChesney running for Circle Pines City Council. This is Local Decision 2023 here on North Metro TV. Thank you.